Okay, the morning of, um, well, after Weary Feet Hostel. One thing I was going to mention, um, you know, at the hostels, most of the times you have an option for private rooms, the bunkhouse, or even tenting on the property. And they're all various uh, price ranges and whatnot, but uh, just some options you have for whatever budget you might be on or whatever you want to do. Sometimes people sleep better in their tent than they do even in a bed sometimes, uh, depending on the circumstance. But anyway, I'm gonna go in, check out breakfast, and then we'll hit the road. So we've got breakfast, pancakes, and sausage, and eggs. All right, another stop, another time to move on. So uh, about 15 miles, I think, to the next hostel. Now this next hostel is one of the oldest hostels on the trail. Uh, from my understanding, the grandparents started it and uh, now the granddaughter runs it. It's like in this old 1800s cabin, so I'm looking forward to seeing what that's all about. But, um, so we'll see what the day holds. Hope everybody's well. So we are here at Dismal Falls, which is point three off the trail, and it's supposed to be, number two pencil says this is a good stop. So we're gonna go a little over half half a mile off to check out this waterfall. All right, so let's check out this waterfall here. Wow, you sure hear it. That's pretty cool. Dismal Falls. While I'm in this green tunnel, a little bit, I thought I'd share a little bit about a conversation I had with some hikers last night, which is one of the cool things at these hostels. You get to talk to these hikers and we're all having the same, you know, uh, experience and struggles and whatnot. But we we're talking about the, almost the cliche thought about coming on the trail and coming to find yourself and figure out what it is you need to be or what you want to do. And, and, uh, all I can speak for is myself, but I personally think, and I shared this quote uh, the other day in, the, in one of the videos, but it was like, it's not so much about finding yourself. That almost insinuates you're looking for something different. But I do think it allows you, if not forces you, to accept yourself. You know, what your strengths are, what your weaknesses are just who you are and then working with that you know God's blessed us each with individual gifts and talents and and so just having security in that I think that's that what that's I don't know I think that's what it's about so just a little deep moment there but just wanted to share that conversation and um, maybe it's something you can reflect on certainly do a lot of reflecting when I'm walking so Every now and then, just want to share with you. Nice lookout. Hadn't had in a little while. Obviously kind of cloudy. But, uh... Pretty nice. Almost apologize because there wasn't much to show today on the hike but it is what it is so i'm coming up here to this road and it's supposed to be like a half mile to the hostel and uh, we'll check out um, woods hole hostel like i told you it's one of the oldest hostels around i think they started back in the 80s and um, the lady that owns it now it was her grandparents that started it and uh the bunkhouse is like a 
barn from the 1880s or something like that. So should be kind of neat. We'll check it out. There's a forerunner like mine. There's a sign right there that says Woods Hole, 0.5 miles. And there's a, a deer carcass hanging in a tree. What kind of craziness? Huh. All right, here's the first view of this hostel, which is the next stop on this Appalachian Trail road trip, trail trip. I guess that should be it. Instead of a road trip, this is a trail trip. Let's go check it out. Hey there, buddy. So here's the bunkhouse. Check in up here. All right, so here is the upstairs in the bunkhouse. I had an option to stay downstairs, but I'm gonna stay up here. So just an old barn with cool bed set up. That's me tonight. All right, so let's check it out. Got a place to put your poles right there. Check this. There's four pack from a shower. <laughs> it's got to feel awesome. Oh, it does. Trash cans. Let's check this place out here. All right. Very cozy and quaint. Typical stuff. Hiker box, table, all that good stuff. You hanging out by the... Yeah, it's chilly in here. When you're done sweating. Yeah. Wood. Is that... That is wood burning, isn't it? Pellets. Oh, it's pellets. Yeah. Cool. All right, and here's the bunk down here. But that was too crowded for me. I'm going upstairs. So this is kind of neat. This is my first package. Paula sent this to me. Hold for Greg Peavy. Here it is, and now I got it. And she sent me this. This is supposed to help. But this is what Miss Bonnie was telling me about. So we'll see how it helps. Thank you, Paula. Very much. Everybody rounding up for dinner. Do I need a plate on the boat? No, 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 no. They got them both out, so... Uh, they grabbed more beef, so... Okay. Oh, that's not a bad thing. All right, I had a chance to talk to the owner, um... She gives a pretty detailed story about how it came about and how her grandfather and, and uh, grandmother started this place. And so I didn't cut it too much because it would have taken away from the story. So I um, apologize for it being kind of long, but uh, hopefully you'll enjoy that. So check this out. Ask the question. Okay, so we're eating here at dinner uh, at Woods Hole and this is Neville. She, she runs this place as an owner and found out she's actually from Georgia. So we, we got a lot in common. We're talking high school football, but <laughs> tell us a little bit about this hostel and, and how it got started, how you got into it. Well, first we got to tell everybody I'm from Cockle County. Okay, all right. <laughs> okay, so, so you're asking a good question and if you really like the answer to this question, there's a story on the website okay. that you could read. But the hostel got started because my grandparents came here in 1940. And wow. they came to own the place after the neighbors learned that, they, that it was for sale. It was cheaper to buy a log cabin in 100 acres than it was to build a fence. Holy My God. grandfather retired from the Secretary of Interior under okay. Jimmy Carter. Uh -huh. And when he retired, he said, you know, let's go back and fix that old place up. Oh, and by the way, they bought it for $300. Holy so cow. That's with the neighbor. So that was split. Uh-huh. My neighbor sold his half to them for a little bit more money, but not much. And um, and then they ended up saying, well, let's fix it up. So every summer since I was three, so this is 1981 or 82 or 83, I was three, four or five. Mm -hmm. We'd come up here and start fixing it up. Well, there was a man that my grandfather had met while he was working in the government who had through hiked the Appalachian Trail. And he had ran down here 
to get out of the rain and he planted a seed in my granddad's head saying, your place would make a neat hostel. How about that? So when my grandparents came here and bought, brought my sister and I here, they fixed it up and they built, maybe point that way, they built uh -huh. this bunk house. Not that nice. Right. But when they fixed the bunk house up, that's when my granddad recognized we got a space for them. They'd be awful interesting to meet. I love telling stories. Uh -huh. And so maybe, and capturing audiences. And so maybe, maybe we should open a hostel. So that was in 1986. But unfortunately, 1987, my grandfather passes away. So with my grandfather passing away, my grandmother hadn't wanted to do this at all. This was not her life path her life interest but she that summer that she ran the hostel realized how much she liked it and, and meeting interesting people mm -hmm. so she kept going for 22 years wow then and then and we have a question over here so we're going to get to that question okay question but but oh it's not a question the light off the lens there oh no, gotcha okay that's my, son, that's my that's light guy oh, cool. <laughs> yeah he's doing something helpful he's making the lighting better <laughs> So that actually changes, yeah. So 1987, they opened the hostel. 2007, which 1986, 2007, which is 22 seasons later, because you have to count 1986 as one. Uh -huh. My grandmother learned she has an ovarian cancer and she has six months to live. Her very first comment when she learns that she has six months to live, and the doctors are going to have to do stuff, she says while she's in the hospital bed i hope those doctors get their acts together i need to get to the cabin <laughs> not i want to get to the cabin i need, need to, to get to right. the cabin well we managed to put some nuts and bolts together so she could get the right medicine and my mom agreed okay well let's help her get there and i agreed okay i'll help her you know i'll help her and um and i was actually substitute teaching long-term substitute teaching with my substitute teaching degree or mm -hmm. teaching degree right. when the school year ended and my grandmother and I and my mom came up here made sure my mom made sure we were okay and my grandmother and I got to spend our last year together here before she, or season here together before she right. died then in 2008 my mom had already decided to do a phenomenal renovation phenomenal so with that renovation with my grandmother's passing which there's a timeline where my mom didn't know and then my mom learned she kept going forward with the renovation. So then my mom decided, you know, I don't want this burden on my plate, but I don't want the financial burden. I wonder if Neville and her ex-husband would be interested. My then boyfriend mm -hmm. would be interested. <laughs> and then, I'm very clairvoyant. <laughs> I met your mom, you, Neville and her ex-husband would be some boyfriend. Yeah, well, it's then my boyfriend. So we, uh, we, actually, we actually said yes. And we moved here in 2009, and then we just started looking around and problem solving and figuring out what we could do to make the place, you know, more hiker friendly. Mm -hmm. and, and 2009, I moved here and I haven't left. The rest is history. How many how many hikers come through a year? I'm gonna would you count say? this year for the first time since okay. my grandmother died. Wow. I've never counted. I've kept <laughs> financial records. I can tell you how much money I made, but y'all uh -huh. don't seem to want to know that. Right. And um. <laughs> And I've kept, I've kept, I've kept those, but I don't have any, I can say April 15th to June 15th, we're more likely to see 20 hikers a day than any other time of the year. Yeah. And um, it kicks in on March 8th and it dies down July 8th. How about that? And uh, I know my, I know my dates, but well, I don't so know neat. how many. Well, I appreciate you sharing all that. Thank you very much.